I want to talk about walking in your inheritance tonight. It's something we all need to do. But as an introduction to it, I would like to uh, consider uh, 1 Corinthians uh, 12, 13, and 14. Just a quick overview. Uh, chapter 12 talks about the gifts of the Spirit. Uh, chapter 13 talks about the love of God. Mm. And then the 14th chapter of 1 Corinthians says, Pursue love and earnestly desire the gifts. And so it's one thing to have a revelation. And today we're going to be talking about a revelation of the inheritance, but then you've got to pursue it. So nobody's going to just drop it in your lap. You, you get the revelation by the Holy Spirit, and then you pursue. Uh, then you earnestly desire what the Holy Spirit has revealed to you. Uh, so it's not just about uh, cherries falling off of a tree. Uh, but it's pursuing those things. Uh, pers and today we're talking about the inheritance. So let's let's think about pursuing the inheritance. Uh, a good way to describe uh, our inheritance is to look at the relationship of Moses and Joshua and how they led uh, the Israelites. Okay, so Moses took the Israelites up to uh, the border of the promised land but he couldn't take them in. A lot of people are standing at the border of the promised land and not uh, going in and, and obtaining the inheritance, not obtaining their inheritance. Moses could only carry them so far. It took a Joshua, which was a type of Jesus, uh, to take the people into, uh, into the promised land. And the promised land is a symbol of the kingdom of God today. So what we see in the Old Testament is a symbol and a type of the New Testament's kingdom of God. And that's what we're going to be talking about, the inheritance of the kingdom, because the kingdom has an inheritance and we're receiving uh, that inheritance. Now let's think about uh, Joshua and Caleb. Uh, they went into the promised land and and they were really excited about it. They, they brought a lot of fruit back and said, we're well able to take it, but there were, uh, where there were two of a different spirit, uh, there were 10 uh, that had a contrary spirit, and, and they said, no, we, we've been looking at the wrong thing, we've been looking at the giants, they're giants in the land, and, and we're not going to be able to go in, and so they were fearful, and they, they caused the, the Israelites to be fearful, and so they had to wander around in the wilderness for years, uh, because of their doubt and unbelief. See, God is faithful and God is able. Mm -hmm. And so what he shows you, a revelation of your inheritance, he's well able to take you in. Every good thing about you is what God gives you through his grace. Mm -hmm. It's not about what you do. It's about his grace. Uh, a lot of people have a calling on their life uh, and their ministry uh, but what they want to do is what they're good at. Uh, you're not called to do what you're good at. Amen. You're called Woo! to do what God tells you to do, what God calls you to do. And so we need to realize it's by his grace uh, that we're able to do impossible things mm -hmm. that are things that are humanly impossible. God is wanting you to do things in your calling uh, that he has prepared for you from the foundation of the world and and we want to think about what it is that's our inheritance so we see that joshua took them in but every time uh they saw a good portion in the land um there were giants there were people ahead of them there were already some obstacles there were conflicts and what you see in the kingdom of god there are conflicts that you have to overcome overcome he who's an overcomer uh, is going to receive an inheritance. Uh, so not, not those that avoid conflict, but those that overcome. Hallelujah. Uh, there's a lot of things we have to overcome. We have to overcome our flesh. We have to overcome the world. And we have to come overcome Satan. But when you overcome these things, you get an inheritance. Now, it's really interesting to look at uh, the promised land and, 
and uh, Joshua took the people in and he gave them their portion. This is a boundary. Mm -hmm. This is uh, uh, the boundary of your inheritance. And so go in there and possess it. There's some people in, uh, and some obstacles that have to be overcome, but you can do it. You're well able to. That was his statement all along. We're well able to do it. But it's interesting to look at the, the Levitical priesthood because the Levitical priest did not get inheritance of land. They got a different inheritance. Their inheritance was God. <laughs> now, let me ask you a question. Do you think that the, uh, uh, the priest got shortchanged? Did they get gypped? Because, <laughs> because what they got, they got God. Uh, and the other tribes, they had land. I mean, stuff that you could walk on. You could pick it up. You could put the dirt in your hand and you could let it uh, fall down. You could let the wind blow it away. But the priests didn't have such an inheritance. They had God. They had the offerings that were uh, offered with fire. Uh, Woo, glory! Hallelujah. And it's good to think about who you are because uh, you are a priest. Yes. Uh, first, uh, 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 Revelation uh, five ten says we're kingdom of priests, priest, the kings, kings and priests. priests. But I like what the message said: we are priest kings. So I want you to realize Ooh, you are priest Ooh, kings. kings, and so you have an inheritance. Uh, and and let's think about what our inheritance is. Certainly, it's prosperity. It's a uh, healing it's mm -hmm. deliverance it, it's all of those things Amen. it's salvation. salvation but a lot of people all they get is salvation and they just stand there mm -hmm. at the promised at the, land the looking border. in lots of people have been born again for years and years but all they do is just look in and, and from time to time they hear about what's in the land what's in the promised land but they they don't go in to get it okay so it's important to think about what your inheritance is. You're a priest. And you're not shortchanged uh, because you do get God. And that is that is exciting. You do. Your inheritance includes God. But I want to talk now about the double portion inheritance. The double portion inheritance, and this is Deuteronomy 21, uh, 17, it says the firstborn a uh, son gets a double portion. And it's not just uh, all to consume it on himself, but it is uh, to uh, help others, help his brothers and sisters and, and, mm -hmm. and uh, support uh, his mother. And of course, who's the mother of us all, but the church. Yes, and amen. And so uh, our double portion uh, inheritance, that's for the, for the firstborn. So let's think about this double portion inheritance. Uh, today, we would call that an abundant blessing. That's the mm -hmm. devil portion. It's an abundant blessing. Well, let's think about uh, Jacob. He had an older brother, Esau. So you think, well, Esau was going to get the uh, devil portion. But uh, no, Jacob uh, got it. He was he was not uh, real scrupul scrupulous at the time. <laughs> but uh, I believe later on, he did change his ways. Yes. And, uh, and his walk. <laughs> and in uh, uh, Genesis 30 at it, it, 27, it says that because of that uh, double portion blessing, he, he was blessed. Uh, Jacob was blessed and the people around him, they all prospered because he had a double portion inheritance. So if you have the double portion inheritance, uh, then, then you're blessed. You're, you're abundantly uh, blessed. Not only... Um, did Jacob get it? He, he wasn't supposed to get it, but but he got it. And uh, you might think, well, I, I'm not supposed to get it, but you can have it. Uh, but but you got to pursue it. You, you've got to go after uh, this double portion inheritance that I'm showing you uh, tonight. Now, of course, uh, Joseph, he wasn't uh, the oldest uh, son of Jacob. Uh, Reuben should have gotten the double portion, but but God showed, uh, but uh, Jacob showed favor to Joseph and uh, gave him the double portion and blessed his two sons and each son got an equivalent of a portion of the, as a tribe. And so Joseph then got the double portion, an abundant, that's what I want you to think about 
on a double portion that you get uh, an abundance of blessings. Mm -hmm. Now, we move forward then to 2 Kings uh, chapter 2, verse 9, and we find Elisha was asking Elijah for a double portion. Uh, Elijah was going to be taken up, and he said, what, what can I give you? And he, he said, I want a double portion of your spirit. And he said, well, Ooh, this is a hard boring. thing. It's a hard thing to give twice uh, more than you have. You, you know, it's one, one thing to give everything you have, but it's another thing to give twice as much. And so you have to get God involved uh, in order to give a double portion. And certainly Elijah did it because he went up. The uh, uh, God sent uh, mm -hmm. chariots and fire, fiery chariots and whirlwind and, he, yes. and took him up and then well, when he was there with God, he was able to send down the mantle and with the double portion. So Elisha got a double portion. Now, what, what does that mean? Well, he, the, the double portion means it's a successor. And so for a firstborn, it'd be the successor to his father. And uh, so in this case, he, he became the, uh, Eli, Elisha became the successor of Elijah. And, and so he was the go-to prophet uh, among all the prophets, and so he he helped uh, bring forth other prophets, uh, younger prophets, and he schooled them. He had schools of the prophets, uh, and he did uh, great and mighty miracles, and really twice as many miracles as Elijah did. Now, fast forward this concept of double portion uh, to the New Testament, and we see we see that the firstborn of all creation is Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. That means Jesus gets the double portion Woo! because he's the, because he's the firstborn uh, of all creation. This is Colossians uh, 1.15. Uh, then he gets all things. <laughs> hallelujah. hallelujah. That's who Jesus is. He's the firstborn of all of all creation, so he gets all things, and it's pretty good to be connected with Jesus. Yeah, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. He gets the double portion. He gets an abundance of blessings. Woo, glory. So it's good to be connected uh, to the firstborn of all things and receive the double portion. Now, let's think about what this uh, all things is. Well, Romans 8, uh, verse 32 says that God, who would, uh, who did not spare his own child, but his own son, but gave uh, his firstborn, gave his son, how will he not uh, freely give you mm, all, all things. things? Isn't that exciting, God? Hallelujah. God's giving you all things. And uh, uh, 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 3, verses 21 through 23 says, we inherit all things. We have all things. Or whether it be in the present present world or in the things to come, we have all things. And you're Christ, you belong to Christ, and Christ belongs to God. And you have all things. Uh, so we are heirs and joint heirs with Jesus Christ. And he has the double portion because he's the firstborn, firstborn of, many brethren. of all creation. And so he has all things. Now, again, I'm telling you, this is your inheritance. I'm, I'm showing you who, what God is wanting to reveal to you by his spirit. But even though you realize that you have uh, an inheritance of all things, uh, that doesn't mean you can just sit down on it. You, you've got to get up and pursue it. Uh, just like you pursue love and, and pursue the gifts because it's all, uh, all things that we have to pursue. It's not that they just uh, happen and, and show up on the scene and uh, they come on the, your front porch and somebody's knocking on your front porch and say, <laughs> I've got all things for you. No, it, it's, you've got the revelation that all things belong to you because you are heirs and joint heirs with Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ is the firstborn uh, of all creation and he's the firstborn. And so he gets... Uh, the double portion or an abundance of blessings, he gets all things. And, and you can partake in that, all mm -hmm. things. And, and so what are you lacking then? Well, you have uh, all things in the present uh, time. You have all things, things in the, the uh, time to come. You, you have all things. You have um, God and, and you have Christ and, and uh, you, you have, have all Ghost. things. And, and the Holy Ghost. 
Okay, so you have all things. That is what the double uh, portion is all about. Now, who qualified you? Who qualified you to have an inheritance? Well, Colossians 1, uh, verses 12 through 14 says who qualified you. It says it's the Father. The Heavenly Father has qualified you. Mm, has made you able to be a partaker of this uh, inheritance with the saints in life. Mm, mm, mm. That's really important. So how did, how did he do that? He has transferred you from darkness and transferred Sorry. you into the kingdom of his dear son. Amen. And, and that's the that's where the saints in the light are because that's where, where the light is. The light is the gospel. See, we think about what the land, the land that uh, Joshua led the Israelites into, how does that correspond to what we have in this age? And that is uh, the, what word is revealed to you. Whatever word is revealed mm. to you, that is your inheritance because all things are yours. Yes, 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 All yes. things are given to Jesus because he's the firstborn of all creation and you are heirs and join heirs with him. And so you get the revelation of what belongs to you. That's your land. That's your promised land. Mm. Uh, Can I just interrupt? All right, Sherry has something she wants to say. Well, we stand on foundation. <laughs> We stand on the rock, Jesus Christ, but we move in revelation. What is revealed to you in the word and you begin to move in it, then that becomes yours. That becomes part of you. Hallelujah. And that's how we're, we're receiving uh, the inheritance. And so you've got to pursue what has been revealed to you. Well, it's revealed to you. Now you, you, with faith, you go out and search it out and you take possession of it, you claim your inheritance. Uh, and you take possession of your inheritance. You appropriate your inheritance. Yes, that's a it, good word right it, there. It, it's not just about, oh, now I have a revelation of what my inheritance is. No, you, you need to go and pursue it. You, you know, if, uh, if if God gave you some land, if, if, or if you inherited some land, let's say from... Uh, a great uncle, you, you'd want to get up there on the top of the mountain and you'd say, oh, that, that land over there, that belongs to me. And, and way over there, as far as I can see, up to that river, uh, that, that belongs to me. And all that land over there to that mountain, that belongs to me. I, I've got to go out there and see what's there, see what's profitable and what, what's not profitable, what, what I need to do with my inheritance. Well, it's the same thing with God. You need to find out what your inheritance is. Let him reveal it to you by the Holy Spirit. And then you, you go out and you search it out. It says, seek first the kingdom. Of God. In every situation, you seek first the kingdom because it, that's your inheritance. Your inheritance in, is the kingdom and the kingdom life is really living in the inheritance today. Jesus said. Mm, that's good right there. If I cast out a demon by the Holy Spirit, then the kingdom has come on the scene. So the kingdom burst on the scene when he cast out a demon. And the, your kingdom inheritance will burst on the scene when you do uh, what you're told to do from uh, Matthew 10, verses 7 and 8. He said, proclaim that the kingdom is here. The kingdom is here. That ought to be our thinking. N not See, we are people of the truth. Not people mm, of facts. facts. Facts, see, uh, those can be changed. They're just temporary, and they can change. And 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 you listen to the media or, or with the government reports what they're saying. All of those things can change, but the truth, see, that never changes. The truth is mm -hmm. eternal, and, and it never changes. And so you've got to understand what the truth is saying about uh, your inheritance. We live by every word that uh, proceeds, proceeds out of the, the mouth, mouth of God. And, and so that's where where we want to focus then. Uh, and, and we're well qualified. You're well, well able because it's the Father. It's the Father who qualified you. He, he took you out of darkness. See, before we came 
to the Lord, we were all in darkness. And, Amen. And we were called dead in our trespasses and mm -hmm. sin. And being dead is, is means that we're cut off from the life of God. Mm. If we don't have mm. access to the life of God, then we're then we're dead in our trespasses and sin. But once we've come to the Lord, he's going to take us. The Father's going to take us out of the dominion of darkness and put us into the kingdom of light so that we can per partake of the kingdom inheritance mm, mm. with the saints in light. And, and that's that's what, what he wants us to do. That's what he wants to do in your life. It is to take you out of darkness, not only in the darkness that you've lived in, but the darkness uh, that's been in your mind that has uh, restricted you from inheriting your, uh, uh, taking your mm -hmm. inheritance, possessing your inheritance. That That's the darkness. Anything that keeps us away from what God has freely provided for us. Amen. And, and Jesus said, proclaim the kingdom is here. It's arrived. It, it, it has come on the scene. And that ought to be our thinking. Hey, the kingdom is here. And, and we we demonstrate it by healing the sick, uh, raising the dead, <laughs> uh, cleansing the, the lepers, and, and casting, casting out devils. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> That's how we demonstrate the kingdom. Okay. So we have to overcome some things in order to receive our inheritance, just like in the time of Joshua. They had to overcome mm -hmm, uh, some, mm -hmm. some uh, armed forces. There were all kinds of things they had to overcome to, to take possession of the land. And it's the same thing today. Uh, Revelation uh, 21 uh, verses 1 through 7 says, if we overcome, we're going to inherit some things we're going to inherit the new heaven and new earth and mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. tabernacle of god will be with us and so mm -hmm. what's the tabernacle of god it's the presence of god Amen. and who is the god on the earth but it's the holy spirit he's Hallelujah. The holy spirit holy spirit is the god on the earth and he's the pledge of our full inheritance uh, but our full inheritance includes the Father and the, the Son, Son and, and the, the Holy, Holy Ghost. Spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. So, so that's our inheritance. It, it's it's the Holy Spirit. And of course, what is the Holy Spirit? It talks about the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy, joy in the Holy Ghost. In the Holy Spirit. And, and so the kingdom then is in the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit is your inheritance. So the kingdom is your inheritance. And in the kingdom and in the Holy Spirit, there are two main categories that I want us to talk about. And one is the gifts of the Spirit and the fruit of the Spirit. Mm -hmm. Now, those are very important. In order for us to heal the sick, <coughs> raise the, the dead, dead. I mean. cleanse the lepers and cast out demons, we've got to use the gifts. <clears throat> Hallelujah. We got to be focusing on the gifts. Thank you, Jesus. Pursuing the gifts, earnestly desiring, <clears throat> excuse me, the gifts. Earnestly desiring the gifts. But you know, the gifts only work by the fruit. That's right. And so this is all, it comes about by us inheriting the Holy Spirit. And we inherit the gifts and the fruit with Him. Uh, but what's interesting about the fruit, you have to realize that it's the fruit. It's the fruit that the Holy Spirit matures, nurtures in us and brings forth. And so we can't just say, oh, I'm going to love people today and I'm just yeah. going to love everybody today. And that's not God's love. <laughs> God's love is something that the Holy Spirit puts inside of that's us. That's right. Uh, Romans 5, 5 says that God's love the Holy he shed Spirit, abroad in our hearts. He put the love of God in us. And, and so we're still talking about qualified. How do we how do we qualify to receive this inheritance? Well, I like what Matthew 21, verse 43 says. Only those bringing forth the fruit of the kingdom mm -hmm. can, can inherit. inherit the kingdom. Mm -hmm. It's not mm -hmm. everybody. You've got to be bringing forth the kingdom fruit. You've got to be bringing forth the fruit in order to inherit the kingdom. 
And the, and the fruit of this kingdom is righteousness, peace, and joy. But you can't do those things on your own. You, you've got to have the Holy Spirit. You've got to have such a strong bond and relationship with the Holy Spirit Amen. and fellowship with the Holy Spirit that he's bringing for the righteousness in your life. Hallelujah. And he's fixing your life. Yes, and, he's bringing and, forth and peace. And he's bringing peace in your life. And he, he's, he's bringing, bringing joy. Forth joy. You, you can't just wake up one day and say, I'm going to have righteousness, peace, and joy today. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> it, it takes the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Holy Spirit Amen. births that in you. He, he nurtures that in you. He brings it forth, and we've got to uh, fellowship with him, build a strong relationship with him, and let him operate in our life to bring forth this fruit, and only then can we have the inheritance of the mm -hmm. kingdom. What's going to qualify you for the inheritance? It's, it's by the Father himself qualifying you, translating you out of the dominion of yeah, darkness, darkness and taking you into the kingdom of light, and that's the gospel of light, the gospel of of light and that's the gospel of jesus christ and, and then you've got to let the holy spirit work in your life and bring forth righteousness peace and joy in order for you to inherit the kingdom so i covered uh, several different topics today uh, and i want you to know that you have this great inheritance and, and it's called the inheritance of all things all mm -hmm. things what, what what is left out of all things nothing you want <laughs> nothing you want is left out of all things certainly includes healing certainly includes prosperity it, it, it includes peace of mind peace of the heart level even it, it includes all of these things anything you can imagine that you can find in the word of god it's there for you it's a part of your inheritance and, and because it's a part of jesus christ of his inheritance and you're an heir and join heir with him and so I, I've shown you uh, your inheritance today, and I've gone over a lot of topics. But what I want you to know, as a bottom line, is you've got to pursue these things. Yeah. Uh, they don't just fall uh, on you. They don't just happen. You, you've got to pursue them and earnestly desire the best gifts and, and bring forth the kingdom inheritance in your life. Okay, Hallelujah. Sharon. Hallelujah. Well, you know, I thank the Lord for inheriting all things and i want all things and i also uh pursue uh and seek after the kingdom first and seek those fruit uh the the fruit of the kingdom i want to walk in righteousness and walk in peace and joy uh hallelujah and the more we we pursue uh the things of the kingdom then the more the Holy Spirit is going to reveal to us uh, the secrets of God. You know, we were driving the other day, and sometimes we do this. We just like to get out and, and drive and, and uh, worship the Lord and sing to the Lord. And, and then he just begins to, to speak to us and, and show us things. And one thing that he said to us the other day was that, that he trusted us with the secrets of the kingdom. You know, and, and this is something that that every one of you, every one of you that is listening on this Zoom meeting tonight, I believe that he can trust you with the kingdom of God, that he can trust you uh, with the secrets uh, that he has. And so as we pursue, you know, there's times when the Lord says, no, you know, I call it the, the traffic light of, of knowing uh, what to do. You know, if there is a, if I see a red light, then I know I need to stop and uh, and do something else. If it's a yellow light, I know it means to to move with with caution and to get uh, more uh, leading from the Holy Spirit. And then if it's a green light, I know that you know I can just go ninety miles an hour. You know, I'm you know I'm I'm free. Uh, you know, to pursue. Uh, and, and I believe that we are free to pursue the things of God because we have come into the kingdom as his children. We have the right and the privilege and the honor to pursue the things of the kingdom. You know, it, it is ours. You know, it says that he has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. And that, that doesn't leave out anything. 
Uh, that means that there's not going to be no lack in your life, no lack of healing, no lack of salvation, no lack of uh, financial abundance, no lack of uh, friends, no lack of, of opportunities. Uh, you know, Sister Becky,